Hi everyone, I wanted to make a video about one of my favorite abstract algebra books. It's called Abstract Algebra, a First Course, and it's written by Dan Saracino. It's a really, really small book. Uh, it's very thin. Uh, it's very uh, user-friendly. If you're just uh, starting to learn abstract algebra, um, this is a great book uh, to use and a great book uh, to own. It's really small. I had a friend once, he came over years ago, and he was an engineering major. And when he saw my book, he goes, hey, what is that? It's like a little Bible. I mean, it is. It's, it's so small. It's such a thin little book, but it contains a wealth of information. Let's go through it. So first, let's look at the table of contents. So the table of contents uh, is pretty standard. It starts off with uh, sets and induction, uh, which can be easily skipped if you already know the material. Then it jumps into binary operations. Then it goes on to groups. Fundamental theorems about groups, powers of an element and cyclic groups, subgroups, direct products, functions, symmetric groups, etc. The way the topics are laid out is such that you can come into reading this book without knowing a lot of knowledge beforehand. So the prereq to reading this book is very low compared to other books. In other words, this is a very, very beginner friendly book. So what do I mean by beginner-friendly other than the order of the topics? Well, let's take a look further inside. So the way the book is written is such that it's very easy to read. So it is very, very easy to read this book. Uh, it might not seem that way if you're just new to abstract algebra, but trust me, compared to other books, this book is probably uh, the easiest book to read on abstract algebra. Another thing that makes this book really special is the level of difficulty of the problems. So the exercises at the end of each section uh, are just the right level. Some of them are pretty easy, so they're like feel-good problems, because you'll feel good when you figure them out. And some of them, some of them are a little bit harder. So um, if you read the book and you really learn the material, in theory, you should be able to do most, if not all, of the problems. So. It's a nice book uh, if you're a completionist. If you feel like you should do every single problem in the book, this is a really, really, really good book uh, to try to attempt to do that. So what is the downside to this book? Well, I think the most negative thing about this book is the content, the amount of content. I wish that Saracino had added more content to the book, um, but it's not really such a negative because if you actually make it through this book and you learn everything in this book, then you will know uh, quite a bit of abstract algebra. For example, this is the last section in the book, I believe, section 21. It's on unique factorization domains, otherwise known as UFDs. So he does mention uh, PIDs here at the end, principal ideal domains. Uh, but let's turn the page. So we have some more stuff here. He talks about a Euclidean domain. Okay, and then that's it, right? That's, that's the last section. Uh, there's nothing else. Suggestions for further reading is how it ends. So there's no like field theory, uh, there's no Galois theory, he doesn't talk about splitting fields and stuff like that. But otherwise, I think this is a really good book. Um, this book is definitely worth owning if you're learning abstract algebra. And I really think this is probably the best beginner book. Now keep in mind, my view might be a little biased, because this is the book that I used uh, when I learned abstract algebra. So that's it.